Hi and welcome to this product feature demonstration video for Adva Nolan's Advanced Bank Reconciliation for NetSuite. Today we're going to be going over auto generation rules uh, and how they can create efficiencies in your bank reconciliation process. So auto generation rules are all about picking up uh, uh, transaction lines that are inputted or imported from your bank statement and automatically creating either journal entries or payment records again out against outstanding uh, transactions already established in NetSuite. So the two cases that we're going to go over today, first of all, we're going to pick up and auto create a journal transaction to match to a charge coming in on the bank statement. So for example, this could be a recurring bank charge that you may get once a month or once a quarter that you don't want to have um, your reconciliation team actually pick up and create the transaction. You want the rule to automatically pick up that, that bank charge is there no matter how much it is, if it's within a tolerance, and then automatically post a journal entry accounting for it. The second use that we're going to set up today is to go ahead and auto generate a customer payment against an outstanding uh, invoice in NetSuite. So say for example, a customer record can have a number of outstanding invoices. We're gonna have a bank, um, we're gonna have a payment come through on the bank statement and we're gonna want an auto general to pick up that payment and automatically create a payment against that invoice marking it as paid in full so we can recognize that. So we go ahead and if we jump into our demo account, can uh, start this off. So we're in the bank reconciliation screen here um, and uh, a couple things to notice is we've got our particular reconciliation account nominated in the top left hand corner as well as a statement date for which we want to reconcile against. Now notice on our GL bank side currently we've got no NetSuite transactions open, uh, none in matched or unmatched, uh, however we have got a few on our bank statement meaning that a bill payment or a uh, invoice payment has been made. It just hasn't actually been posted on NetSuite yet. So the first one we're going to try and address this morning is this missed bank charge down here, uh, crediting our account for £20 or debiting our account for £20. Um, we're going to try and create an auto, match or an auto general to pick this up and go ahead and post a general transaction to a bank charges account. So we're going to assume that this uh, missed bank charge may come through say once a month on the 22nd of every month. Now to create an auto general, it's fairly simple. We can either go up to the ABR tab on the center bar, head to ABR setup and head to a, uh, auto gen templates and create new or um, arguably more efficient, uh, efficiently, um, we could go ahead and we could select match against the particular bank statement line and create new template from here. Now this will load up the uh, Autogen template screen, but notice it will pre-fill in uh, a number of bits of information for you. So first of all, we're going to start off uh, writing a description about what this Autogen rule might be for. So we're going to call it a bank charges rule. We're also going to uh, tie it to a particular reconciliation account, so this only fires off against a one reconciliation account when we generate in it. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to add assign a priority to this autogen template and this is useful if you're using multiple autogen rules in conjunction with one another. If any two collide or any two meet the same criteria, you can choose which one will take priority in the generation. Note that if you've got any uh, journal approval workflow set up, we can go ahead and control the approval workflows right from the autogen templates or sorry, the approval statuses uh, right from the approval workflow, uh, the autogen template. More importantly, moving on to the match rules, we can see a lot of this information has already been sourced directly because we've actually created a template from within the Reconcile Bank Statement window. So let's just hop back to that briefly and we can see that for this miscellaneous bank service charge that the type is bill payment, the amount is uh, £20 uh, or £20 uh, Australian dollars, and we can see the reference in here. Notice that on the Autogen template, We've got the billing type coming, or the transaction type through is bill payment, which matches uh, the statement reference text coming as Miss Bank statement. And we've said that the statement reference match option wants to match exactly. So if you know, for example, that your statement text may come through and it may contain this value, you can go ahead and said instead of matching exactly, you can say that it just contains the value or, for example, starts with. Notice that our transaction amounts already been brought in as well, so uh, £20. What we can also do is we can actually state a transaction amount variance. 
So for example, if your bank service charge varied month for month by uh, say five pounds, one month it was 15 pounds uh, and the other month it was 25 pounds, you can actually have this auto general actually pick up on that by stating that variance here. So for example, you could drop in five. Again, if your uh, bank statement charge came through on the same day of every month, or if you wanted to actually allow a date variant, so say if it came through on the 20th or the 24th, uh, you can go ahead and add that variance in there as well. So moving on, we can go down to our generation rules, and we're only going to bother with the first two for now, although you can add a transaction memo as well. So we're saying that we want to create a journal entry when we generate the transaction on this end. And more importantly, you can actually control over which nominal account it actually posts to. So if we go ahead and type in bank, we'll notice that uh, a list of all our expense accounts actually drops down from here. And we can see this neat, uh, neat one here called bank service charges. So if we go ahead and nominate that, uh, we can kick this off. So that's pretty much it for creating this recurring uh, autogen template. You can just see how easy it is to set up. So we go ahead and save that, and we'll hop back into our reconciliation screen. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and process the auto-generate function to see if we can pick up that miscellaneous bank service charge and automatically generate a journal entry for it. So this will load you into a new screen, which will tell you a process uh, pending. And if we wait a few moments and hit refresh again, um, it will go ahead and tell us the status of that process. Now we can see that the system's confirmed to us that the auto generation com is complete and it's actually picked up on one record. So one record matched the criteria for that auto match rule. Um, what this is also confirmed to us is that one uh, transaction on the GL side has been automatically created. To see that, we can go ahead and click here to hop back into the bank statement and we'll notice right off the bat that the bank charge has actually disappeared. Now it hasn't been reconciled yet, it's simply been moved to the match screen. So at the moment we're looking at all unmatched transactions. Uh, this is really quite neat because not only has it generated a transaction, it's matched it up as well. So we can see that here, we can see that the miscellaneous bank charge has been assigned a match ID of 26 and it's also been associated with this journal entry here which is really quite nice. We can view that journal entry just by clicking through and selecting the particular journal transaction. And this will give us a really nice confirmation about exactly which bank account it's come from and uh, which normal account it's been posted to. So we'll close that down and we'll just head back into our reconciliation window and head back to our unmatched screen. So moving on, we're going to be moving on to that second case where we're going to be trying to pick up on outstanding customer invoices in the system and creating a payment file uh, directly from a, uh, a line that's come through on our bank statement. So notice that we've got two lines coming here. So we've got an amount being received for £120 and then £400, both for the customer ABC Tenko. Notice that on the system we've got up here, we've got two invoices that are open for ABC Tanco, one for £400 and one for £120. We're going to go ahead and try and set up a rule that will go ahead and create the payment transactions for those. Now to do this, we can either again kick off the process by hitting match and then creating a new template. However, just as easily, we can go ahead into ABR setup and navigate to autogen templates. Now, notice that I've already got a uh, autogen template already set up here. So we'll go ahead and we'll try and use that for now and see exactly how it's been set up. So if we drop into this uh, customer name autogen template and just view it, we'll see exactly what it contains. So I've given it a suitable description and I've uh, assigned it a priority. I've said exactly what the transaction type coming in is. So for example, the transaction type as stated by the bank statement or uh, the statement import has been nominated as a payment. I've nominated this transaction type as a payment and I want to match exactly. Now this time for our generation rules, instead of creating a journal entry, I've said that I wanted to create a customer payment and I'm posting it to the account accounts receivable. I've also stated a transaction memo to post when the uh, payment transaction is created. And this is scripting in things like the reference coming in from the bank statement and the date as well. 
Now, moving on to the allocation and entry search, I said that I want to uh, auto allocate this payment, so I don't want to just create it, I want to allocate it to an invoice, and I want to match it to the invoice, which has exactly the same amount to this particular transaction. However, there are this does offer flexibility in what you can actually match it by. You can say match it to the oldest invoice or the newest or match exactly by reference. So yeah, it's entirely up to how you'd like to set it up. We're saying that we want to create this for a customer um, as opposed to a vendor or, or, or something like that. And again, we've got some static uh, setup options here. So we're pulling in the entity ID field in the uh, reference. So for example, in here, we're not matching on an invoice number. We're simply picking up the customer name because that's the way this situation is set up. So ABC Tanko. Uh, and we're saying that that wants to match exactly. Now, what we're saying down here is we're looking for the entity expression in the bank statement reference between characters 28 and 39. So, for example, in our bank statement, uh, the customer name starts at character 28 and will finish at character 39 at the earliest. So what we can do is to test this, we can go ahead and copy our uh, bank statement transaction reference and go ahead and drop it into our sample reference and see if it likes it. So by returning that, we can see that our entity search has come up positive because it's actively located a customer with an internal ID 2721. So that's all set up and ready to go. So this auto generation rule should in theory work now. One other thing to consider as well, we can actually play around with account distributions here. So if you say, for example, didn't just want to post to a static account, you can actually go ahead and distribute um, the payment between multiple accounts by percentage. This is really good if, uh, for example, as one example, if you wanted to uh, uh, charge uh, to, to assign um, a charge to a different account. So for example, a 2% charge on your incoming transaction. So if we go ahead and we just cancel this because this is already saved and this is on the system and we navigate back to our reconciled bank statement rule uh, screen, if we go ahead and click the auto generate button, hopefully this will kick off a process and it will pick up on these two transactions, assigning them to our two outstanding invoices. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Once a few moments have passed, if we go ahead and click refresh, it should tell us the status of the generation. So this generation is complete and two records have been processed. If we go ahead and click here to navigate back to the bank statement, we should see that the remaining transaction should have cleared from the unmatched screen. Now if we navigate to matched, we should see that uh, our transactions are matched. So these two payments that are appeared on the bank statement have been assigned match IDs. And then also we've got two payments being created against the outstanding invoice. So with the memo payment received from the payment reference on the particular date. So we should see this reflected on the particular invoices. If we go ahead against the original invoices and refresh it, we should now see that they're paid in full uh, with a payment record actually being created against this uh, by our NetSuite uh, uh, auto-generate script. So that's pretty much it for the auto-generation rules. If you have any questions, I'd like you to email them into, or I'd like to invite you to email them into sales at nolanbusinesssolutions.com. Uh, give us a call on 01252 811 663 or visit nolanbusinesssolutions.com for more information. Thank you very much.